Joining us now is Leonie Matui from Tui Tangata, which specialises in health and wellbeing for Māori and non-Māori. And we've got Willie Jackson on the couch with us too. Kia ora kōrua. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, Tāpita, he's a warrior in the truest sense, isn't he? I mean, he's That's fighting right. his demons on multiple fronts. That's is the doctor right? Is it, is it about taking the focus off weight, Leonie? It is, it is indeed. And you know, for a long time, we've been encouraging that among our communities. It's the wrong motivation for a lot of us. It's not connected, like Isaac was saying, um, to anything meaningful, um, connected to our whakapapa, connected to our culture. And that's what I love about uh, Tapita's journey, uh, is that he's started off from that base, and that's the motivation that's driven him. What an inspiration. There's he's so much. He really yes. is, isn't he? He yes. really is. Now, he also said that he's a little bit reluctant to talk about his story, Willie. Um, you're joining us on the couch today because you've got your own story which you've also been a bit reluctant to speak about in the past <laughs> your own health battles you had some heart issues some years ago uh, yeah about seven years ago now I, I don't like talking about it too much but i don't mind talking about it if it if it does something for our people you know because all i say to our people is what everyone says leonie and them would say all the time get the checks because i never had heart problems or anything for me it was hereditary i, I think that's oh. you know because i was never like uh, Tapita and that 30 k's out I was always uh, you know okay I suppose <laughs> and just I just got picked up on a routine check mm -hmm. you know I remember Len Brown remember Len Brown went down and uh, um, was uh, and just about well, he virtually died and my wife said well you're busy you're busy go get, go get yourself checked so I got checked uh, the heart because dad had, dad had died of a heart attack just before 60 uh, and they just said you're stuffed you know your arteries 85 percent blocked just on a routine check. So basically they were telling you that you're going to die? Uh, well, they, they said I had a 20% chance of surviving. And I said, well, that's fine, I'll take that. And I wanted to move on. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but my wife and uh, John Tamahiri, should I, I, and I don't even like <laughs> mentioning him because he's Mr Hardy expert, they said, no, you've got to have... Uh, Operation, so I ended up having the full heart bypass. And, and then after that, you would have had to make some some pretty. You make some changes. Ch yeah, well, 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 I did. I mean, I'm, well, I say hereditary. I, I did used to eat red meat every day, so I've made changes in the last seven years and uh, got back into the exercise. But you know, it's not just going to happen to people who are out of shape or, or out, you know, it's it can it can happen to anyone. I, you know, people just drop dead. And I, I just think the message is you, you've got to get the checks. You don't that's, get the that's checks. That's an important message too, Willie, because, you know, you, know, you can look fine from the outside, can't you? You can look fit and healthy, but actually on the inside, it tells a different story. It absolutely can. And um, likewise, you can be fat and fit as well. And it is all about the, the exercises that you're doing together, um, the types of food that you're eating. But there are different measures and scales. Isaac was talking about uh, Māori measurements uh, that are more meaningful. But there are also other measurements rather than just the scales, rather than just your body mass index. There are new technologies that can actually paint a better picture of what's going is on a inside. Key, a key one? Uh, yeah, there is one. It's, um, it's involved with, it's called bioelectrical impedance. Um, <laughs> big <Okay>. words. <laughs> um, it basically shoots um, a, an electrical pulse through your body um, and that pulse uh, interacts with the tissues inside your body differently so it will hit muscle different to uh, your organ tissue to fatty tissue so that's the that's the picture that it paints and okay so maybe a more size. accurate uh, portrayal of what the situation is going yeah, on inside yeah, of you yeah. we're going to come back to this in a moment the whole morning is about food and and um, and Māori needing to focus on it and make some changes perhaps hopefully so after the break we're going to look at the battle to cut sugar <laughs> So who are the biggest sugar pushers in your whānau? Grandparents can be the worst with their secret lolly stashes, but one nanny known to generations of kōhanga and punareo babies is taking a stand. It's a good day to smile about turning three. And nanny Letty Brown wants to keep it that way. Sugar's slowly being cut from te punareo o manawanui. E kai 
ko te kaihuka. Uh, he, he maha na wa mātou tamariki o mua e takataka ana na pirau ana na, na niho na reira ko tērā te tino take e korero mātou ki mo mātou mātua pehe ana te mena ka kore he huka i o rātou kai ka tautoko hoki rātou engari me āta haere mātou ki a koe ki a tautoko te hapuri i wahora me na mātua, me na kau mātua ke, ke ta mātou kaupapa. Even though the kids love them, cakes are a rare treat around here. Water's in, soft drinks out, but figuring out where sugar's hidden is half the battle. Ke na pākehi me na pātara e ki ana he kare huka ke roto, engari ka ki mai na mātua o he huka tonu ke roto. Ingari, a quarter of my na mama, kia kaha, na fire, or na tamari, he yuka tunuki roto, he hinu tunuki roto, he taia na kai, kia ata haere tamata haere, he kite mata mena kai te tika kai te hira nei. The change can't come soon enough. Excess sugar in our diet is exceptionally dangerous for our health. It's um, even more addictive than in cocaine. Well, we're seeing a lot of decay. Uh, Children as young as two years of age coming in and we have to remove every single one of their teeth. Well, we have to knock them out completely. Um, and um, I mean, last year alone, there were 5,000 children that were put under general anaesthetic and all of their teeth removed. So, um, you know, they don't have a choice in the matter. High sugar intakes associated with a raft of health problems, including diabetes. Things are about as bad as I think that, that they uh, will get at the moment, hopefully, with education, you know, and starting young. They're going to take it home to the farm, though. They're going to be talking to mum and dad and, and hopefully sharing their knowledge because, unfortunately, adults are a little bit stuck in their ways. They're very aware of the teeth. When they sing their song, they know. They already know. They show us their teeth in the morning and they tell us that they've all brushed their teeth, even the little one-year-old. Often grandparents are the problem. The nannies are the worst. I'm looking around for my, for my lollies. Mohi o Nātou Kaya na Tamariki, ko tērā tāra mātou mahi kāre huka ki roto o rātou kai, kei te pai ki a rātou, e te tīmatanga kāre tino pai, engari kei te ahua wai a rātou ki te kai kāre huka. E nu wai mira ka, he huka kei roto? He huka kei roto? We're getting there and we're really spreading the message to everybody to, you know, cut down on the sugar. So it's really, you know, important that we look at the future and see where we're going from here and we, you know, we spend a lot of time teaching our children te reo, mena tikanga, and if those children are going to go out there unhealthy, they're not, it's going to waste our time teaching them the reo if they're going to go unhealthy and die at 40 or 45. We want to have healthy adults and healthy children and healthy grandparents and healthy great-grandparents. Let's hope going sugar-free so young means their sweet tooth drops out with their baby teeth. Too cute, the best puna in the world. And brave too, <laughs> Aileone, because actually that sugar-free journey is... It's a hard one to take. It's confusing, it like Nanny Letty said. Yeah, yeah, she's right. And it is really confusing for a lot of our whānau, especially um, whānau connected to learning environments like Pōnāreo and Kōhangareo too. Um, but there are ways to educate around that. Um, reading food labels is one way. Oh, and I know it's, food it's, labels. it's horrific, <laughs> but once you get that tool under your belt, then... So I tell you, yesterday, just yesterday, I was comparing two uh, labels with a friend, and I said, well, how okay. much is in, how much sugar is in it? She had yeah. look, she goes, oh, 10, 10 grams or something per hundred. And I was like... Oh wait, what does that mean? 
yeah, yeah. What does yeah. that mean? Yeah, for sure. And is that it good? is confusing. Is that good? What's, what's 10 oh, grams look, per 100 grams? It takes a whole wananga, really, to understand um, the food labels. But yeah, we need to be comparing products in the per 100 column rather than the per serve column. And, you know, when you're looking at sugar, salt and fat products as well, you're looking for under 10 grams per 100 grams. Always under 10 for all That's, of those things. That is the, is the best that you want to aim for. But uh, realistically, when you start doing that, you're really limiting the number of foods that you have available to you. So it's, you can flex around that. And you know, it's, it's a tricky thing too because, you know, I gave up sugar for about six months last year. It's a pre-wedding challenge. And, and actually, I was quite amazed by um, all of the various health benefits. But it was hard. I believe you've tried it yeah. too, haven't you? It's, yeah, it's hard when, like, I was brought up on cordial, you know? So... <laughs> You think in the 60s and 70s. I mean, okay. you you got to, I mean, it's such a job for us as Māori, isn't it? We're like, we're, that's why we need the leones and all that. And, you know, and the constant reminders to our people because, you know, people are a bit stupid sometimes, eh? Including people like myself. Well, it's kind you, know, of, yeah. you know, like or giving lollies to your kids or your mukapunas. I mean, it's... Uh, the power of the sugar, you know, it's, it's completely... I, I call it colonised our, pla our palate. Yeah. You know, and they're colonised our palate. You're not blaming palate. the Pākehās again. Oh, no, again. Heck no. <laughs> so do we, do we need to regulate? Does the government need to get involved? Yes. Yeah, I think there needs to be some regulation. And I think the regulation really could start uh, focusing around the way that things are advertised and marketed, to, mm. especially to children. Like, it's, it's shocking if you, you know, I challenge you guys in your drive home today yeah. Yeah. to just um, look at the number of uh, signs and images that are promoting and shoving this sorts of food in our face. Do we need a sugar tax? Taxes and subsidies. That's what they talk about. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah no, I know. And we, we do have to leave it there just for yeah. now. We might be able to come back to that mm -hmm. in a moment. World class boil up and hangi across the ditch. That's next. <laughs> He pai ki a tātou, te kai kōhua, te hāngi, te ikamata, te parāua pārai, me te pāua krimi. Engari, kia kitea i te rārangi kai o ngā whare kai o konei, au wareake. Kia hatia, kei te takutai koura o ahi treiria e nei kai e kai ngāna. Hei kura kai, hei kura mahara hoki, ki te u kai pō. Signs of the times, we are sport for choice with international flavours, but Māori kai... It's hard to find. One chlorine white bait, three fried bread with garden syrup, one raw fish, one tumeka and one power pot, please. But in this cafe on the Gold Coast, Māori kai dominates the menu. I'll get a fried bread. Yep, garden syrup. Yes, please. The white bait for this. And I'll get a raw fish. The power pot's really popular. Yep. Oh, and I'll have a tumeka brekkie. And, and my eggs just running. It was more of an idea of having a bit of culture on the coast. So what it was like, have a cafe with a bit of Kiwiana feel, embrace the culture and somewhere where people can just come and sit down and chill out like you're coming home for a feed. Welcome to the chili bin. And we are the chili bin workers. <laughs> I'm Renice, the baby sister of the chili bin on the Gold Coast. This is my mum, Thelma, the owner, my sister, Nadine, the manager. These are t my two twins, Oni and Patrice, and this is my other sister, Keyshawn. As for the health conscious, well, um, they're working on it. It's more like a meeting house now. We have people coming on Sundays from church. Big families come. We've had like 86th birthday, 18th birthdays. It's somewhere we people from home can come with all their family because a lot of cafes they don't like kids they don't like you know the big crowd and that but no we welcome them so it's going good. We're the Kiwi Kardashians on the GC. <laughs> Māori kai is hard to find but the owners believe there is a big enough market here on the Gold Coast. Everyone's so homesick here and they like fly home all the time. Instead of that, just come down here, chill out, have a feed, listen to the music. But um, 
I think we are the only Kiwi cafe on the coast. As far as I know, there's Kiwi Fish and Chips, and they're a nice young New Zealand couple. They've been here a few, few years. And there's um, other little Kiwi takeaways, but there's no Kiwi cafe. As far as I know, none on the Gold Coast. And actually, you might be right, I don't know anywhere where there's a Kiwi cafe. Yeah, so that's good. A good hangi is hard to find, but the hangi pit has made the search easy. Yes, hangi, fry bread, raw fish, and all the favourites from Aotearoa. Yeah, it's awesome, eh? Oh, for us, not good for our hips, though, eh? <laughs> No, no, it's, it's, it's good to see this, eh? You know, our people doing stuff, like, you know, having a business like this. And there's another one started down in um, Springwood, eh? Yeah, down in Springwood, so it's getting better, you know? Plus, everyone else that ain't Kiwi can taste all our kai. The demand for this kai has grown, and now they have opened three in the Gold Coast. Most of the customers, Māoris, New Zealanders, come in as families. Like we have our local customers, Australian ones, but as a place for them to um, meet other people from home as well. We have a lot of people come just introducing themselves to each other, talking, laughing, sharing their stories. The story is the Hangi Pit started in Gisborne, but found its market here in Australia. We have a lot of locals, you know, that come here, but the first open, I think it was just somewhere for Māoris to come for food that they enjoyed. Yes, we enjoy our Māori kai and are happy to pay for it. It seems they've found its place on the menu, even if you have to travel to the Gold Coast. But I'm not complaining. Who feels hungry now? Man, <laughs> that looks so great. good. That looks so good. But you're not going to tell us that we can't have our, our boil up? Oh, heck no. No way. The, the boil up is tapu, my whānau tell me not to touch the boil up. Don't go there with yeah, the boil up. Yeah, but you have, haven't you? I have gone there, thing. however. I have been able to <laughs> stealthily sneak in a healthy boil up, so it is possible. What, what's a healthy boil up? Oh, it, it, oh, I can't give you all the secrets, but <laughs> it, it might look like pouring the water off and then adding it in. Um, less salt, but more veggies and... and compared to the meat. So what about the fat? Possible. What about the fat? I do chop a little bit of the fat off, yeah, but not everything. Keep, yeah, you've so got to keep some huh? for, the, for the taste. Yeah, eh? absolutely. But it's a tricky thing because, I mean, that's, that's our soul food, right? All that's, our, you know, that's the food that we feel good about when mm. we see it on, on offer. How do we have it, you know, can we have our boil up and, and eat it too? Yes, absolutely you can. Um, but, you know, Without we, chopping all too much out. Well, yeah, exactly. We need to think about kai Māori being synonymous with kai ora. Um, so, they're, they're, you know, when you look at traditionally our diet was very low in fat, um, high protein and uh, lots of green veggies, leafy greens. That's and a really important point, I think, to say, is mm. that actually boil up is not a traditional food for us. It's become a ritual. Yes, that's it? right. Yeah, it surprises me um, how many people do think it's traditional, but it's semi-traditional. And, you know, when you look at the history from where the boil up come from, it um, came from a, you know, a huge economic land base being taken out from under us uh. and the cheaper <laughs> cuts of meat being the only alternative that we had to cook with. So, uh, so it is a wonderful food, though. It's a beautiful soul food. I love it. I yeah. enjoy it. And I do put motu motu in there as well okay. but, um, but yeah thinking about the portions and thinking about ways you can make it healthier and you know if you do have a Māori food business think carefully about your ethic around manaki and whether quantity or quality is what it's okay, about. Okay we have to leave it there but thank you so much for your time today uh, Leone and Willie this morning on the couch with us. Scotty. Been fantastic talking about food all morning now coming up next week we meet the heroes of the community. I'm the only Māori midwife in this area and you know I do home visits so and you sort of have to when you live in a remote rural place like this our women from down the coast you know they don't have a car they don't have a phone so they don't come into town that often they come into town once a month to do their shopping my average kilometres per week is about 800 kilometres sometimes can rack up a thousand the first of our specials this morning focusing on Kai. Thanks for joining us. And happy Mother's Day to you. Oh, thank you, and to everyone out there. Kia pai te rai, hora ake nei ki mui te aroa roe tiwi, kauwe ware ware ki te whakanui i tō māma. Kia ora tātou.
Mangas. Hi, Pahu.